<laughs> Good evening. It is your man Nico being with the steam and Good evening. Um, I got some things to talk about tonight. We're gonna go back in time and uh, we're gonna look at some stuff from uh, past eras, early 2000s, and stuff like that. First, I want to show y'all something right quick. Let's see here. Let's do that. And John with five. All right. So we see here lines get confirmed. John is in early development. As it says here. With Keanu Reeves starring John Wick Five, John Wick Chapter Four, topping three hundred sixty-three million globally, film chief Joe Drake addressed the future of the Assassin's franchise during an earnings call. Um, Lionsgate Motion Picture Group chair Joe Drake teased development of the fifth movie in the studio's John Wick franchise Thursday during a Q four. Rainy's call that has fans a buzz. What is official is that, as you know, Ballerina is the first spinoff that comes out next year. We're in development on three others, including five, and including the television series Continental, which will be airing soon, he said. We're building out the world, and when that five movie comes, it will be organic. We'll be organically grown out of how we're starting to tell the, those stories. You can rely on a regular cadence of John Wick. <clears throat> okay, so, J-Dub, <laughs> what's up, man? Shout out to J-Dub, you've been rocking me for a long time. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my man right there, y'all. Um, let me get back to the screen and stop sharing for a sec. So we've had um we've had uh John Wick movies for about a couple years now. Started in 2014, we're now in 2023. So it's been that's about what? I think that's about eight to nine years of John Wick films. And even though it's an organic franchise, going to your fifth movie and you're about to branch out by doing a whole bunch of other spinoffs from the franchise itself, it seems to me that y'all taking a book out of the Fast and Furious franchise. Because y'all keep cr cr uh, cranking out sequels. You keep cranking out sequels. Now you're doing spinoffs. And I'm sorry, that's not, yeah, that's, I'm sorry, that's not Fast and Furious. That's the MCU. People are starting to take note from how the MCU did. And even though this is a singular um, uh, character we're talking about, if they're going to keep making movies and sequels, uh, even spinoffs, my bad, spinoffs to uh to this successful franchise. It's going to be quite a ride. Now I will say, I'm getting tired of seeing Fast and Furious movies come out. I do not need to see um another uh Fast and Furious movie come out besides this one, because this is the perfect way to end the franchise. Fast Ten, fasten your seatbelts. That's what the catch line was. That was a catchphrase. We all know that it was supposed to solidify the ending with how Vin Diesel saw it, but then all of a sudden we're saying, oh, there's going to be a part one and two. 
What? It's just no. We're not trying to see fast 12. We don't want to see that. Just leave it in single digit numbers. Well, leave it at the beginning of double digit numbers because it's fast 10. So let's leave it at that. But that's just one thing. So John Wick 5 is supposed to be in development soon. I don't know when the uh, teaser date. We all know how everybody goes with um, the way they're doing stuff. I don't even know how they're having it in development when this writer strike is going down. So if he's directing the movie, where's the script going to come from? Because John Wick 4, spoiler alert, John Wick 4 ended with supposedly John Wick dying. So uh, we are going to go with that. I'm quite interested in how you're going to move forward with that. But that's uh, another topic for another discussion. Uh, the second topic. I'm going to bring y'all to, um, let's see, what I'm bring y'all to? I'm going to bring y'all to this page right here. Uh, let's see. All right, let's go here. Let's here. I'm gonna do that. Hmm. Who is moving? Let me see. This movie is called Jumper. And um, came out in 2008. It came out during the beginning of the MCU and stuff like that. It was, um, I got stuff buffering right now. But um, let me see how this thing will come out. All right, here we go right here. There are people out there who have power. Who you are, what you are, can change history. Did I just, I just teleport? Hey, hey, hey! What happened to you? David, open the door! This thing that just happened could set me free. Oh, Lord, here we go. Rav's technical difficulty, people. Um, let stop sharing right quick. Let me see. Hold on. Let me go to YouTube right quick. So, um, let's see here. Let me go back to, uh, Jumper. Give me a sec, y'all. I'm just trying to get some stuff, um, going right here.
Let's see here. All right, cereal right here, y'all. Mm, no, it's not it. No, let me see. So here we go right here. So Uh, <clears throat> All right, so y'all remember that movie come out came out in twenty eight in two thousand eight. Um, I believe that uh. There is a sequel series to this movie. It's called, um, it was a YouTube series called, uh, what was it called? Let me go back to my research. The sequel series to this movie was called um, Impulse. That's what it was called, Impulse. And um, Impulse is was a TV show about a girl who has the same power set as the main character in Jumper Impulse. Let me see. I'm gonna look this up. YouTube series. Here we go, right here. So, hmm. Impulse was a series that um came out in twenty eighteen. 
which is funny enough, it came out in 2018, 10 years after the initial release of Jumper in 2008. Uh, as you can see, it starred Samuel Jackson, Christian Hadison, and um, uh, more characters, well, more cast that was uh, that have been in other projects like Garden of the Galaxy and um, uh, stuff like that. The um, what I always didn't understand was uh, either it was the actors having their own uh, having their schedules booked with other projects. Ooh. 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 Sorry, Jesus Christ, man. Either it's that or they just let it go to waste. Because in my opinion, you had a franchise that was based on the book. By um by Henry Gold, um I'm sorry, not Henry Gold, Stephen Gold, and I'm pretty sure when he saw that movie, he was like, "Y'all do know there's more to this story. There's this story is not end until a certain point." Now, granted, I have not read all the books. I've only gotten the spinoff book with a uh, Jumper Griffin story. I've only read that, but um at one point, I was deeply invested in this uh franchise because it was a franchise that talked about like different things uh in history and stuff like that um there is one line in the movie where uh the other jumper that's like christian hayson character's character he says that um they've been around the uh the the people that hunt people like him have been around s since the dark ages they've been hunting them left and right and it's been a whole shabbat It's very different how uh, how certain movies and franchises have um, have come, and um, this is very interesting. Uh, I have another movie I want to show y'all that y'all probably don't even know about that has Chris Evans in it. Um, let me see. Uh, uh, let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. The next movie I'm gonna show y'all is a movie called Push. It has Digimon Hunson and um, Chris Evans in it. Okay. Let's see here. It goes right here. Oh shit, I'm not even showing on my screen. Oh Lord. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Lord of mercy, Jesus. I'm sorry, y'all. Hold on. Let me start that over.
All right. So that's one. Now, um, I will say, um, that movie in and of itself was a classic because I watched it plenty of times. Um, I've always wondered if they ever thought about crossing over both franchises. Um, I, for one, think that if it's a nostalgia factor because people that actually have paid attention to both of those movies, this was in between um, both the, like, the in-between of Chris Evans, well, before Chris Evans became Captain America in the MCU and um, stuff like that. But, like I said, Stephen Gold created the Jumper series where people can teleport and stuff like that. And um, there was a whole bunch of stuff that um, that came with that. Um, I've always thought about writing stories about stuff like that, where they actually crossed over franchises and stuff like that. And if somebody's watching, please, if you're taking my idea, please contact me, because that would be a golden opportunity to cross over both the Push franchise and the Jumper franchise. It would be unique because it speaks to one franchise that the CW came out with that they remade. And it has similar properties to what um to what the uh both the um to what both the jumper and push uh movies uh, had. And, um I'm gonna show y'all this. Now, the Tomorrow People was a series that came out in the 80s. But like I said, it was remade in 2014 when, um, of course, the Arrowverse had just started coming out. I'm going to throw this with you guys as well. Let's see here. All right, here we go.
But yeah, so that is another series that had common um has a common theme. Uh common theme that you probably saw in um the first these three uh movies and TV shows was that people had special powers and that some kind of evil corrupt organization, whether it be the government or just an ancient um group of people that found people that could have a certain power or powers, they were trying to find them and hunt them down and try to bring it into them or try to either induct them in their own organization. Um that series that you guys saw the trailer for only went for one season. Um it ended with the story wrapped up, but it ended with a cliffhanger because if you guys go back and watch it, even if you guys don't have to, you guys could do it on your spare time. Um it ended with a cliffhanger that almost paid homage to like a, a winter soldier type story where one person lost their powers in the middle of the season and at the very end they got their powers back but they didn't have their memories and so the main evil corrupt bad guy that you guys saw in that um trailer came and got that person that got their powers back and said yada 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 this that the third you don't know these people and i need your work for me so it's very very the storytelling was great there um it's just that the i believe when they canceled the series after season one. They said it was due to ratings. Now, of course, you have, um, when it comes to TV shows, it's different. When uh, it comes to like viewership and whatnot, uh, they always say the box office is what it was for new movies. And I guess the ratings and how people accept and consume the TV show um, is different. But that's all said and done uh the next movie i have on the docket that um uh has has come to mind in certain days uh is let's see here i do believe that um the next one that i'm gonna bring up is called uh let's see let's see let's see let's see uh, uh, oh, I got you right here. Here we go, right here. Edge of Tomorrow. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Hmm. Let me see here, y'all. Because I know exactly what, um, what happened the last time. Uh, give me a second, y'all. Hold on. All right, I'm back, y'all. I uh, had a minor setback, but um, let's see here. This is all right. Uh, all right. So, edge of tomorrow. All right, here we go. Right here. So I'm pretty sure people that actually are sci-fi geeks remember this movie.
Are you guys getting this? Hold on, y'all. This thing is not doing what it's supposed to do. All right, so let me do this. All right, so. All right, cool. Let me do that right there. All right, cool, 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 cool. Now we back on track. All right. All right. All right, so that movie right there, um, that movie in and of itself was, um, it was very gripping when it comes to the concept of uh, time. It basically was stuck in a time loop. Um, once again, you have to watch the movie for, for yourself to uh, get the whole gist of everything. But the news that came out before, and I'm going to look this up. So, Edge of Tomorrow 2. Um, let me see here. Oh, wow. There's, a, there's actually a... There's probably... There, wow. Okay. Edge of Tomorrow 2. Wow. Okay. Here, here goes an article, so I can actually pull this up. Let me see here with this. Um, Edge of Tomorrow 2. There is supposed to be a sequel to this movie. Edge of Tomorrow 2 was supposed to come out probably, I say, because the movie came out in um movie came out in 2014. So this was uh January 28th, I mean January 18th, 2023. Um why Edge of Tomorrow still hasn't got a sequel. So uh, Edge of Tomorrow or Live, Die, Repeat, Edge of Tomorrow, if you prefer, is a 2014 action-packed sci-fi film starring Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt. 
The film received rave reviews from critics, with many praising its inventive storyline and not stop action. It follows a soldier fighting a war against aliens who become caught in a time loop, reliving the same battle over and over again. Critics describe the film as thrilling and cleverly crafted, some even calling it one of the best sci-fi action films of the year. The film has led the film has led to calls for a sequel as fans can't get enough of the thrilling action and mind-bending plot twists. But we've been waiting for years. Will there be a sequel to Edge of Tomorrow? Let's find out. Live, die, repeat, and repeat was all but confirmed until it wasn't. We got the first update in 2015 in December where Christopher McQuarrie, during an interview with Collider, stated that Cruz had an idea for a sequel and the concept was locked and loaded. Later in April 2016, it was revealed that the director and producer Douglas Eric Lyman, uh, Doug Lyman, had already signed on to direct the sequel. And screenwriters Anna Waters House and Joe Shrapnel were to write the script. In October of 2016, Lyman revealed that the sequel would, in fact, be a prequel. And in 2017, disc disclosed the film title Live, Die, Repeat, and Repeat, and that Emily Blunt and Tom Cruise would reprise their roles. In March of 2018, screenwriter Jez, Bus Jez Butterworth joined the crew for a script rewrite, and so did American author, director, producer actor and screenwriter Matthew Robinson in March of 2019 to rewrite the screenplay. In October of the same year, Lyman confirmed the script was complete. The next update was in 2020 when Lyman revealed the project was still in the planning stages despite a few challenges. Another update was released in January 2021 where Lyman stated that a sequel would happen eventually and just needed Blunt and Cruz to pull the trigger. So, According to statements from lead actress Emily Blunt, the sequel to Edge of was cast in doubt due to the high budget required. The first film had a budget of $178 million and earned $370.5 million worldwide, but due to COVID-19 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it would have been too expensive for Warner Bros. to invest a similar amount in a sequel. Additionally, scheduling conflicts with lead actors Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt, and director Doug Lyman have also been an obstacle in getting the project off the ground. Director Doug Lyman announced in January 2021 that the script for a sequel was ready, and it was just a matter of coordinating schedules with Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt. However, it may prove to be a difficult task. Cruise, since Edward Tamar, has been working on several movies, including Mission Impossible, Jack Reacher, The Mummy, and so on. Um, huh. But um, as we all know, all these movies are coming out. But um, Blunt, on the other hand, has also been extremely busy since Edge Tomorrow, working on 2015, Sicario, uh, The Huntsman, The Girl on the Train, 27 Movies, Animal Crackers, all this other stuff. So. What it shows in this, uh, I guess, what it shows in that little realm of uh, storytelling and that situation with that film was everybody got busy since nobody wanted to pull the plug on that movie. And they still had hope to make the movie, but like it said, people got busy trying to find another work. And you can only stay, I guess, stay uh, stagnant for so long. Because if you can imagine an actor trying to wait on other people that are writing the story for a movie and they don't, they're taking their sweet time, I mean, you're going to do so much. And I understand during the pandemic, that's when stuff started to get kind of iffy. But people should have, this movie could have been out before the pandemic came because the movie came out in 2014 and of course we always see that a movie probably takes two years to make and it has to take them at least two years to get the stuff off the ground get it rolling film and everything so you could have had this movie out but once again you had people taking their sweet time but i digress the next movie i'm gonna get i'm gonna, uh put in your head is a familiar one, um, but it's a family-friendly one. So let me see here. I'm gonna do this right here. 
Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, let's see here. For the people that like anime and grew up watching anime, I think you guys are going to like this one. All right. So, here we go. This movie also came out in twenty in 2008. 2008 was a very good time for people to uh, make movies, by the way. It was a catalyst for everybody to come together and um and look at stuff and be fantasized uh, fantasized by people that wanted to tell stories. It was a very good thing to um to look at. But uh, I got y'all right here, so I'm gonna see if you guys know what this one is. Oh, shoot. My bad, y'all. <laughs> All right. Well, for those who know, no, for those who don't, well, you found out. That is a classic movie that was made in 2008 called Speed Racer. Now, Speed Racer, of course, was made um the anime in of itself was I think it was a cartoon that um that came in the form of like I said a cartoon that came up came out a long time ago uh just to oh shoot I didn't mean to press that but let's see here so speed rush of the original was a character that came out in uh it came out on fuji tv um it was the release date for that movie was 2008 april 26th um it was a very decent movie i remember uh when i went to go see that movie well i didn't go see that movie but i went to go see the incredible hulk that came out in 2008 and when i went to go see that speed race was also showing i stuck my head in there watched it saw a little bit of it but i didn't watch the whole movie um it was a very interesting very interesting movie the graphics everything was great the storyline was great 
the it was a very good movie. It was a family friendly movie, but it made sense because people that grew up watching the Speed Racer TV show um, that came on the old Cartoon Network shows, stuff like that, they watched it. And I do believe um, after that movie came out, a couple years later, when people were thinking they were going to make a sequel to the movie, um, they up and came out with um, a TV show called Speed Racer uh, The Next Generation. And it showed the whole slew of things. I mean, it was different, but at the same time, it was kind of confusing to me because I wasn't I wasn't familiar with with the source material of that um, whole entire genre. But it was very very good. Um, I'm going to create more videos on this. Uh, this is just a unique um, situation. But yeah. Thank y'all. Um, please tell me how y'all feel about different movies in the comments. Uh, y'all can contact me. I might be starting a Discord soon. Um, I'm going to be starting a Patreon for my Black Panther fan fiction. I might be doing a episode not either tomorrow night or another time. But yeah, holler at me. I love y'all. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all soon. Thank y'all.